Uh, let us move to Tel Aviv now and the foreign editor for Jewish News, Jotem Kofino. Jotem, thank you so much for joining us here on Prime Time on Talk. So, look, we, we've heard the political side here in the UK. Just so that we understand the land where you lie, uh, what are Israelis and indeed, perhaps more importantly, the Israeli government saying in response to the attack that took place over the weekend? Well, I think we have to um, simply prepare for an imminent attack. That's what I'm hearing. One of my sources said that the war cabinet has agreed that there should be a response. Israel will attack Iran. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We're looking at probably days, um, in the coming days, where Israel could launch an attack. And this is despite the massive pressure from the UK, from, from uh, the US, from France, from everyone, to, for Israel to back down. But as Israel says, we cannot accept 120 ballistic missiles fired uh, over our territory. No country in the world would accept it, and Israel cannot accept it, because if Israel does, it changes the power of balance between the two countries. Iran will now then know that it can get away with launching a massive missile attack. So not only is the government preparing to attack, most Israelis also see this as an opportunity to go after Iran now that Israel successfully shot down most of the missiles and the drones. But part of the, the success, if you like, of that mission to shoot down those missiles came from the support from the US, from the UK, from France, from Jordan. If that support isn't there, doesn't it leave Israel open to more attack? Wouldn't it be better to work with the Allies and work out what a proportional or the right response to that is? There is an argument that Israel could simply just um, take this as a win, as Joe Biden told uh, Netanyahu, and uh, appease the Allies by not launching an attack and hoping that uh, the Allies would impose diplomatic sanctions on Iran, and then in, in the future, the Allies would again defend Israel if it were attacked. But Israel also really thwarted most of those uh, drones and missile attacks by themselves. Obviously, the UK, the US and Jordan helped. But I don't think that Israel will launch an attack that is so wide scale that it will necessarily ignite a war. Uh, we know that Israel isn't interested in a war. That's also what my source says. And Iran isn't interested in a war. So it will most likely be a more confined attack. I assume it will be on military targets, obviously not civilian targets. And the question really is here how, how the Iranians are going to take this, because this is just a tit-for-tat thing that could easily spiral out of control. But like I said, Israel cannot accept such a wide-scale attack on its territory without uh, a response. But you say uh, cannot accept such a wide-scale uh, attack. And yet 99% of those munitions were shot down and never reached their target. So rather than necessarily, uh, I don't know, applying a knee-jerk re response, wouldn't it be better and stronger for Israel, given that they need to get international support for some of their actions elsewhere, to put it in the bank, as it were? Not to say that we've forgotten, but just to say that now is not the time. Surely. Uh, I also think that some, and I know that some, argue that the, that the attack shouldn't come now. You can, you can easily wait a couple of months. In fact, the former defense minister, Moshe Yalon, said, you don't have to attack now. You can wait a couple of months until there's a better time. Just take, take the success that you had so far with shooting down the missiles. Take the, the support that you have from the, from the allies who've been criticizing you for months for what you're doing in Gaza. All of a sudden, you have their full support again. Take this and then wait. There's definitely an argument to be made for that, but but that's simply not the case. And I think when the entire, when the war cabinet, and I assume also the security cabinet, will agree that there needs to be a response, that is simply a reflection not only of the government but also of the people of Israel that they cannot, they will not uh, allow Iran to change the dynamic and the power balance in the region. But let me ask you this: I mean, does it matter what international states think about Israel, uh, in the sense that? Um, as you say, diplomatic support was very strong after the October the 7th attacks, and so it should have been. Uh, perhaps that strength has not existed uh, for as long as the Israeli government would like, given some of the activities that have taken place in, um, uh, in Gaza. And then now we have a situation that that support is back again. Wouldn't it be better to keep your allies on side? Or does Israel and Israelis and maybe the government not actually care about that and they'll take the decisions, back us or leave us, you, you choose, we don't care? 
Sadly, there are those who don't care so much about it. I think it's an absolutely wrong way to look at your closest allies, it's in particular the United States, which, which supports Israel financially and militarily. You have some far-right ministers who literally said that Israel should go berserk now after the Iranian attack. They don't care so much about American support. I would say the clever ones, the smart ones, know that it is absolutely vital to keep American support um, intact. So that's also why, like I said, I don't think we're going to see uh, something uh, of an attack that's out of control. But also a good point to mention here is that what's being said publicly and what's being said behind closed doors is not always the same. I have many sources in the government that say that this criticism that Israel has gotten publicly from allies in the past couple of months is simply not the same kind of rhetoric that they're using when they meet them behind closed doors. Now, whether those sources uh, are right or not, it simply is, uh, I think, a fact in politics in general that usually, rhetorically, you can say something uh, much different to your, your constituents simply because it's popular. And then when you talk to uh, your ally behind closed doors, it's a completely different atmosphere. And I, I do think that there is a case of that when it comes to Israel and the US at least. Well, you're Tom Kitfino, uh, foreign editor at the Jewish News. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Busy times for you, and we really appreciate your insight.